So a vacuum pump? Yep, so in the plant room he has, uh, well, he has, fr from our side, we have uh, the vacuum pump, so it's a Bomatic Airstar. Um, it's an oilless system, so whenever I say oilless, you don't have to put oil in to lubricate the veins. Um, you change, basically, it's a dry running pump. You change the gearbox oil once a year, but uh, I suppose the biggest thing is it is it's all vacuum on demand um, with it. So, you know, we're running, when we were in here earlier, we were running at 20 hertz, so less than half speed for actually milking all the cows. Really, the only time it will ramp up to full speed is during the wash. Um, so that's, that's, that's a fairly typical setup. And again, you know, one of the things of this is it doesn't matter if it's on a rope tree, a herringbone or, uh, or a rapid exit, you know, that, that's a fairly typical setup for us, variable speed vacuum pump and, a dry, uh, and it being dry running as well. And your vacuum level is typically at what for milking? F a, for on, on a low line and our rope trees at 42 kPa. Okay. So we'll have a look. So compressed air is a big component of, uh, of the Bobantic system. Yep. So comp compressor is as important as what the vacuum pump is. Um, to be honest with us, we have a, everything's con all our valves are controlled compressed air. The only thing we use vacuum for is milking the cow. So it keeps a very nice, stable vacuum all the time for the cow at the cow's teeth end. We're not having rams or valves shutting and closing off the vacuum. Um, so again, uh, whenever the last video that we've done, you know, it's the same type of compressor. It's designed for a high duty cycle. Um, and then we have the moisture traps and regulators and then the air dryer as well for so, putting clean, clean dry air into the parlor. So what's that doing? Or what would happen if you didn't have an air dryer on the system? So um, potentially you, you could get away without an air dryer, but the physics of an air compressor at a creates a pressure in the air by combustion and how that, what that affects is then it heats the air up on the output of the compressor. The problem is whenever you heat air up, you create moisture. Um, so basically what that essentially is, is a fridge. It takes the hot air, cools it down, takes any moisture out and then puts dry air into the parlor. Okay, and is, is it doing that to the air as it leaves? Yes, yeah. the air as it leaves. Okay, that's fine. So I suppose in terms of how everything is paid for and where the money is made and into the bank basically is your your milk is coming through here yeah milk is coming milk is coming through here um we have a you know all our lines is a two inch stainless steel line four inch milk filter capable of 500 cows and um, we have automatic plant washer um, it's an oversized plate cooler as well so like we we were one-to-one -one water so one-to-one -one water milk so we should be a milk coming in and out should be a huge differential. We are aiming to put the milk in three to four degrees higher than what the borehole water is into, the t into it. Um, from this, I know we can't see it upstairs, he has heat recovery off the bulk tank as well. So as I said, everything now is about energy efficiency the, from the vacuum pumps, the milk pumps all being variable speed. We're taking any of the, uh, the hot air out of, or the hot gas out of the um, bulk tank as well. We're putting that through a thermostor um, to collect the, the heat off it. Okay. So, in terms of drain val drainage valves then, again, you have a couple down there, have you automatic valves? Yeah, all automatic valves. So whenever, again, where we're at in, in Scotland, uh, it gets very, very cold in the winter time here. So we have to make sure that we have drains everywhere to drain all the water out of the lines, not just obviously for the collection point of view from the uh, processors, but also just to stop freezing and the freezing with it. What's the black box in the wall? Black box is an uh, air injector, so it, uh, whenever it's washing to, wa to, wash these mil to wash the milk lines, basically it creates a slug of air to create a wave through the lines then. Right. Better washing? Better washing, yeah. yeah. Better okay. washing. And actually, if you use a system like that in these bigger lines, you, you have to use less water. So instead of trying to flood the lines, you're actually creating a wave to go down through the lines. Okay, so in the dairy here, there's quite a bit of space. Is um, maybe space for another tank in time? Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, with a... With the way milk's being collected now, everything has to be about flexibility. Um, we don't know what future it's going to bring for this dairy as such, whether we maybe possibly want to go three times a day or maybe go up in numbers or both. Potentially put another tank in, that's why we have, which is slightly longer than what we would normally have, is we have the, ho the flexible hose, the non-return, all built onto it, so that, again, we can go over to that tank, but right. also we can go onto that tank, so it's in a central position, so it really is just a matter of sliding the, new, the, the second bulk tank in. So a detail that you have there, which I probably haven't seen much before, is the non-return valve is on the hose as opposed to the tank. Exactly. Right? Yes. Yeah. It's, all, it's on the hose and uh, on the 
hose and then that's why you have the the drain valve here and also on the other side of it then it's it's connecting directly into here so it's draining out of this whenever it's washing then so to finish here gary if uh, somebody was ordering a parlor how long does it say for you to maybe order a parlor or order the machine and how long to install typically you know we would a uh, from point depend on depend on configuration and size, but you know typically like the parlor that we have here, um, from point to order till that you're install, installed and milking in it, you know with building work as well involved, you'd be realistically be six months. You're talking about an eight week installation time and an eight week build time, but builders at the builders generally it, it it's hard to get that all to roll into one. A road through would be longer. I always give customers. From the point you break ground on a rope, a rope tray until you're milking in it, you're doing very well if you can do it within a year, a 12-month period. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of time. A lot of time. There's a lot, there's a lot of unforeseen um, things that will come up during any parlor build, but you know, there's a lot of time spent under the ground before you actually come up into the bit that the finished product between drains, water, ducting, all the rest of it. Yeah, great. Look, it's a very impressive project here, Gary. No? It was, um, I suppose we've always wanted to do a video on a rapid exit, so it's been a nice example for us to see it. So, yeah, credit no, to the work you. that's done here by you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay.